Hi guys, Andres here and welcome to another video. Today is a little rant and review about budget gear. Because like most of you, I'm not a multi-millionaire and I'm only a part-time working photographer that gets sometimes paid for, you know, my crappy photos. Um, I don't want to spend a ton, especially when it comes to purchases that aren't that exciting, like memory cards, batteries, organ donations. So I always look for good deals when they are to be had. Now, when it comes to memory cards, it's a little more difficult because I want something reliable and trustworthy and stuff like that. But batteries are a little different because you always feel like it's just supplying power. It shouldn't be that expensive, right? But the Sony batteries over here are around $120 Canadian, about, you know, 90 bucks US, plus our Canadian taxes, which takes it up to about $7,000 each. So luckily we have a bunch of third parties that produce batteries for the Sony system. I used to use a bunch of them when I had the Sony A6000 series from companies like Wasabi and Rav Power. They were always well reviewed. Those batteries generally sucked in general. So why spend more for the Sony if it's, if you need like seven of them? But with the FZ100 batteries, they last pretty much all day on a single charge, depending how many photos you take, of course. However, now that I have two camera bodies that are full frame and both use the FZ100 batteries, I wanted to make sure that I had enough to cover both cameras all day and a fail safe in case a battery gets lost or stolen or even by a stork. Now I do have two FZ100 batteries from Sony that came with my A7 IV and my A7C, so that's a good starting point. I also have an additional Sony FZ100 that I bought as a secondary battery for my Sony A7C. And additional batteries today, thanks to a company that you probably all know called... Newer. Uh, Newer makes basically budget versions of any gear you can think of, whether it's lights, like that one over there, uh, batteries, even some lenses, stands, they make all kinds of shit. So when I found this little case from Newer that comes with two batteries and is USB-C, micro USB and USB-A rechargeable and can act as a power bank with batteries in the case, I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. Now, why was this appealing? Well, for less than the price of a Sony battery pre-tax, I picked up this case with the two batteries. So it's a pretty good deal. And that's kind of the big selling point for me. How does it compare to Sony batteries though? Are they just as good? Will they last as long? That's what we're here to find out. Now in general, as you can see, as we're doing this unboxing, it doesn't come with a whole lot of bells and whistles. It comes with a cable, the two batteries, the case and stuff like that. The build quality is generally pretty good for a product of this price point and a product made by a brand that you know, non-photographers I've never heard of, presumably. But the build quality was surprisingly good. My only complaint was the hinge on the back of the case, which does seem a little flimsy. I don't know how long it's going to last, but when it's brand new, it's, it's fine. You know, you throw it in a bag and the case is pretty flat and doesn't stick out and won't open because it has a magnetic lid, things like that. So I think it'll be okay, but that remains to be seen. Now, in terms of the batteries, which arguably are the most important part, they do last a fair bit, not quite as much as the Sony FNP FZ100 batteries. I really wish they would simplify their naming. Come on, Sony. Now, in my testing that I did, I basically put both the Sony battery and the newer battery in my A7C recording 4K video until the batteries got exhausted. In between the two tests, I allowed the camera to cool down for about an hour and a half and the batteries as well. Both batteries are fully charged. I used the newest Sony NPF Z100 battery that I own, which came with my A7 IV. It's only a couple of weeks old. And the newer, of course, is brand new. And the difference between the two, the newer got about 83% of the way there in terms of battery life. So the newer lasted about two hours and 26 minutes before the battery was exhausted. Whereas the Sony went to two hours and about 55 minutes or so. Now, given the price point, I think that's an acceptable trade-off. Um, I kind of was expecting, because when I got the batteries, I weighed them both, and the newer was slightly lighter than the Sony, despite the fact that on the back, the specs on both batteries say the same information in terms of watt hours and voltage and things like that. But the weight with batteries is always a dead giveaway that you're gonna get lower battery life. Now, in terms of rechargeability, what I did is use the USB-C port on the newer case that the batteries came with. 
And I use both a 18 watt charger that you would use with any USB device like your phone or something. And then I also use the 50 watt fast charger. And there was no difference. In both cases with two batteries in the case that were completely drained, it took about four hours, four and a half hours to charge them both to full. And there was no difference using the newer or the Sony batteries recharging them. So interestingly, given that the Sonys have slightly higher capacity, the recharge time was actually quite similar, give or take a few minutes, right? Now, in terms of USB power, if you do decide to use this as a power bank to power another device, you will obviously have one or two batteries in there, which you can use to power a phone or even a camera. Uh, I haven't tried it in terms of how long it would take to charge a phone, but you know, in a pinch, you could use this as a power bank if you have a lot of extras. However, for the price you're paying for this thing, I would highly recommend you just buy a dedicated power bank if that's what you're after. You'll get more capacity, faster charging, and a smaller footprint. One thing that I do wish this case had is a battery life indicator. Now, I do have another newer dual battery FZ100 charger, which does show you in a bar format roughly how much is left to charge on the batteries that are charging. This one, unfortunately, only has an indicator light, which is red if the battery is charging, green if it's full. Not the best user experience, but at this price point, I mean, okay, fine, I guess it's fine. This charger also has two SD card slots. No, not for taking pictures or storing any type of secret data you may be gathering while you're spying on people with your camera. But it is storage for two SD card slots, and the way I'm planning on using it personally is to put a backup SD card for each of my cameras in case of failure in this case. That way, if I'm in the middle of a shoot and I need to switch a card because it failed, I have access to it along with my spare batteries. So that pretty much covers it for the newer FZ100 battery set and case. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys use third-party batteries? If so, how many do you own and what brand do you use? Um, I'm always looking to add more power, more power, more power. So if you guys want to check this battery set and charger out, I will leave links in the description below, which are affiliate links. You can purchase them there if you so desire or find more information at no extra cost to you. But it does help out the channel if you use those affiliate links, you know, as all the other YouTubers say, in addition to the self-promotion of liking and subscribing. If you got something out of the video, you did, right? Batteries are super exciting, aren't they? I wonder why they don't get many views on YouTube. Hmm. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.